Good afternoon to you. Let's do a video on the definition and some examples of public goods. Okay, so public goods are kind of weird, and there's, there aren't very many of them to think about, so that's probably good. Uh, but they do exist, and they do create some unique uh, problems for uh, economies. So first, to get us thinking about this, let's do three goods that if I consume it, uh, others can't consume it in the same way, or vice versa, right? If you consume these goods, uh, I can't consume them the same way. So economists use this term consumption. We don't mean eating it, uh, well, that we could, uh, but it means really to use it, right? So uh, you could consume gasoline. You're not going to drink it, but you're going to use it for something. You know, we consume automobiles, housing, all kinds of things. So three goods that if we consume it, others can't at the same time. You know, the clothing on your back, the food that you eat, uh, the glasses on your face, all of those are going to be uh, personal consumption, right? So uh, my consumption affects yours, your consumption affects mine, and tends to be pretty personal. And then uh, two goods that if you consume those goods, others are unaffected by your consumption. So uh, these would be something like cable TV, right? We can both have cable TV, we can both have satellite uh, television. We're not going to affect each other's consumption at all. Uh, another example maybe be like a large clock in a in the center of a town, maybe a uh, Big Ben type situation. Uh, we can all look at the clock, we all get the benefit from it, uh, but we're not affected by other people's consumption of that clock. Okay, so this gets to private goods, and private goods have two qualities that private firms like. They like to sell these things, and here's why. So a can of Pepsi is a private good. It's a private good because it has something called rivaled consumption my consumption of that can of Pepsi affects your consumption of that can of Pepsi and vice versa, right? We both can't consume the same drink of Pepsi at the same time at the same way, okay? And so that's what rivalry is, that's what rivaled consumption is, uh, other people's consumption is affecting others, okay? Then also, how do I get the Pepsi? Well, in order to get the Pepsi, I have to pay for the Pepsi, so this is excludability. Excludability is the firm's ability to charge for its products, right? Or in other ways, it's to exclude people who don't pay for those products, right? So firms can give away things for free, but uh, you know, often that's not a good way to keep a business successful. So excludability is important. So firms like to sell these things, right? They like private goods because we want everybody to buy their own unit, right, or whatever it is. And we want to be able to exclude people who don't pay for them. So an example of this would be like a, a video game machine. Uh, it is rivaled consumption because if I'm on the video game machine, uh, you can't be at the same time. Now there may be like a two or four player or whatever situation. Um, but with these machines, eventually they have a limit. And then you're going to have to wait for somebody, for somebody to finish or you can have a turn. So that is rivaled consumption. They are also excludable because if you don't put the money into the machine, machine will not play the game. So very good example of a private good. Well, public good is the opposite. There aren't very many of these, but they're non-excludable and non-rivaled in their consumption. Okay. Best example I can give you is national defense. National defense is, a, is often thought of as a pure public good because it is non-rivaled in its consumption. We all uh, consume national defense the same way at the same time. Uh, to pretty much the same level, right? So here in Arizona, we're protected by the uh, U.S. military, and up in Washington, they're protected by the U.S. military at pretty much the same uh, equal um, level, and by me consuming, it doesn't affect somebody else's consumption, okay? Now, it's also non-excludable, so the U.S. military will, will protect everybody within the borders, uh, whether they're a citizen or not, whether they're a taxpayer or not, whether they're a child, everybody gets equal protection because in order to do military, national defense, you have to be able to uh, just protect everybody, whether or not they're taxpayers. So, you know, this would be like if the if some foreign government were to invade a country, uh, the military is not going to say, well, you know, go blow up Bill's house because Bill didn't pay his taxes, right? And speaking of which, uh, how do we pay for these things? Well, we pay for these things uh, through taxes, okay? But this leads us to an interesting problem because not everybody pays taxes. So you have a situation where in order to, to provide this service, or could be thought of as a good too, often their services, I have to provide it to everybody whether or not they've paid for it. Okay, And this is a, a unique problem here, and it's one that we call the free rider problem, is that there are people who are going to benefit from this, 
that don't actually pay for it, right? So those are called free riders, okay? Uh, and if you really think about people's incentives, people have an incentive to free ride, right? So one person not paying their taxes isn't going to really break the defense budget, right? Now, uh, so you have an incentive to personally not pay your taxes or to cheat on your taxes or whatever, uh, because you know you're gonna get protected by the US military whether or not you've paid taxes. Okay, now the problem, further problem for society is if nobody pays taxes, then we won't have good military budget and the extent of the national defense will decrease and uh, military guys might run out of, or gals might run out of bullets or uh, health care when they get back if they're if they're wounded in action or whatever, right? So this is the free rider problem. It's one that you're, you personally are, uh, familiar with because you've been put in a group uh, project in school or at work everybody gets the same grade or same performance uh, evaluation and uh, somebody has an incentive to not work hard because they know if everybody's getting the same grade I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and take a free ride because somebody else will, will work hard for me right so you as managers have to overcome this and in, in my world, right, a lot of uh, instructors, they have uh, students grade each other on their own work or, or we just don't do a lot of group work, right? So this helps uh, solve the free rider problem. Okay, here's a little uh, matrix here of the four different types of goods we could run into. So first one, uh, we already went over that, uh, private goods, example would be food, rivaled consumption, and it's excludable. Down here, non-excludable, non-rivaled, national defense. Right. Those are examples. Uh, then up here, there are what are called common goods. Okay, uh, out in the open ocean, it's uh, it's not really possible to exclude people who don't pay. Although uh, you know, technologically speaking, I suppose we could get close. Um, Going to be hard though. Uh, but it is rival consumption. So I've put a, a clip in the um, in the videos there about uh, overfishing and by one boat catching fish and affects the consumption of another boat's ability to catch fish and then also in the future okay so this is uh, definitely a rivalry there then there are non rivaled uh, consumption goods that are also excludable so we can have 18 uh, you know people or 18 groups of people playing golf on a golf course um, we can have you know three to four to a thousand people watching a movie in a movie theater at one time uh, they're all of their consumption is pretty much non-rivaled, uh, not exactly, but uh, up until congestion, uh, we can be there, right? And so firms like to provide these services because they can charge for them, and we can we can pretty much supply them at the same uh, level there, right? Now firms like these because they can make money off of them. I can exclude people who don't pay, and they tend to stay away from uh, public goods because again we can't make money off of it. And um, everybody's going to get kind of the same uh, benefit from it, right? And uh, this isn't really a good, I mean, it kind of is, and it creates some unique environmental problems for uh, economists and, and society and policymakers, too. Let's go through a couple examples here. So the SunTran bus, uh, is it excludable? Yes, it is. If you don't pay the money at the front of the bus and the bus driver kicks you off, is it rivaled consumption? Not really, not until the bus fills up, okay? Now, in bigger cities or New Jersey, uh, uh, rail, they, they don't take a ticket, and when you get on the rail, they, they fine you later on. Uh, they, what they're doing is they're limiting their own excludability. Okay. Uh, streetlights, are they excludable? Can I keep people from using the streetlights or benefiting from the streetlights if they don't pay taxes or if they're not from around the community? And then, uh, no, I can't without supplying the streetlights, so they're non excludable. And we all consume streetlights the same way, so those are rivaled consumption. Uh, in and out hamburger, any food is always excludable. Uh, in fast food world, you have to pay first before you get the, the food, and then it is rivaled consumption. And once I eat this, you can eat it. You have to get your own. So this is a good business to be in, private goods. Uh, XM Cirrus Radio, I guess they're Cirrus XM Radio. They are excludable. If you don't pay the bill, they turn it off. However, non-rivaled consumption. So this is a pretty good deal pretty good business to be in here okay uh, what about broadcast radio though so if we're broadcasting over the airwaves is it excludable I can't stop anybody from listening to the music um, unless well, I just don't I can't I can't 
send it out there and then have a way of, of keeping them from doing it. So it's non-excludable. Rivaled consumption, we can all listen to the radio stations the same way at the same time. And uh, it's not going to affect other people at all. Okay. Uh, Tucson Rodeo Parade. So, by the way, uh, broadcast radio, public good. Tucson Rodeo Parade, another public good. Not really excludable. Okay. I know in some cities it is possible to put a fence around the parade. Don't think that's a reality here in Tucson. Uh, it never really has been part of the rodeo parade. So not really excludable. Can't, can't keep people from out that don't uh, pay. And it's non-rivaled consumption because if the parade route fills up, then we just make the parade a little bit longer like they've been doing uh, in, in recent years. Right? The parade route used to be a little bit shorter than it is now. So Tucson Rodeo Parade, Tucson Fireworks Show, those are uh, public goods. Uh, is our social media platforms are they excludable actually they are uh, it is possible to make people pay even though they they choose not to you know, uh, some apps and online platforms do have a second tier where you do pay um, but uh, it is, so it is possible and even though snapchat facebook and twitter choose not to uh, is it rival consumption no it's not in fact it's the opposite right so it's it sort of has this network consumption uh, quality. We want more people to be on it. It makes it better. Uh, you know, if people, you know, half the people were to somehow abandon Facebook, uh, it would be a big problem for Facebook or Snapchat or whatever, uh, just as it was for MySpace, right? So it's it's not non-rivaled consumption. It's sort of the the opposite of that. We want other folks to to consume these goods too. It makes it more fun. Uh, tickets to sporting events excludable. You have to have a ticket to pay to get in, or somebody has to pay and whether it's the team or whoever and it's just like the social media it gets better once it up up until it fills out right so it's not as exciting if the stadium's half full and it's much more exciting when the stadium is completely full okay um, so non-rival consumption up until it fills up we call these public parks okay public parks are they excludable is it possible to make people pay to get in and it is. If you've been to the Grand Canyon and other popular parks, Sabino Canyon, um, it is possible. They do make you pay. Uh, we can see it here. So it is excludable. Um, is it rivaled consumption? Actually, yes, it is. If you've been to the Grand Canyon or another pop popular park, very full, uh, that's rivaled consumption, right? Also goes with if somebody goes out there and throws a bunch of trash around, right? That's another form of rivalry and consumption. Last example, public restroom. They call it a public restroom, but does that make it a public good in the economics definition? Um, is it possible to charge people to get in? Okay, so first of all, uh, a lot of businesses, they make you buy something in order to, to use the restroom or have to be a customer in order to get in there. So in that sense, it's easily excludable. In, uh, this is in, in Chicago here. Uh, there's a, a fee that you pay to get into this bathroom. And the bathroom cleans itself, so it's very cool. Uh, this is an example here in Paris. You see these in a lot of big cities. Um, so it is excludable. It's possible to make people pay a little bit to get in and use the bathroom. And then is it uh, rivaled consumption? Well, I'm sure that at some point in your life you've been affected by somebody else's consumption of a public bathroom uh, through various ways. You know, there's the, the person who goes in there to destroy the soap dispenser or whatever, and then there's the other people that... Uh, again, their consumption definitely affects your consumption of a public restroom. So that's public goods, their definition, and some examples. Thank you.